In this video, I'm gonna close another chapter in the Foco Cinematic Universe. I've talked about Terraria, I've talked about Spelunky, and I've talked about Don't Starve. These games have shaped my mind to what an indie game is supposed to be. A funky, wacky world filled to the brim with these stupid, fun, and crazy IDs. I'm talking flying metal eyes, alien spaceships controlled by little green balls, clockwork horses, goblin invasions, talking spiders, levels completely made out of eggplant, so on and so on. I just absolutely adore the amount of creativity these games have to offer and the ideas they bring to the table. But most importantly, they are fun as hell to play, like really goddamn fun. I wanna fight spooky ghosts, I wanna get an item that just makes me fart, I wanna go to hell. Indie games in general have a lot of freedom to do whatever they wanna do, they aren't really restricted by another company. If they wanna add a giant middle finger in their game, they can just straight up do that. And because of this, some developers have made some weird ass stuff okay. man with the best example being the binding of isaac a game where you are a little baby fetus that fights mutated zombies while pissing and shitting all over the floor this is not a joke this is the game and I love it. The thing is, I have a lot of nostalgia for this entire franchise. I remember going on vacation to Italy with my family as a 12 year old gremlin. We stayed in a hotel with this cool ass swimming pool. There was an arcade with a bunch of classic game cabinets in it. You had this really stunning view on the beach that was just around the corner. And you know what I did on that vacation? Yeah, that's right. I was watching 40 minute long Isaac Let's Play episodes on YouTube made by a literal egg in 480p 15 fps good job wasting your childhood dumbass and i got proof i left a few comments on some of these videos uh, like this one and this one yeah, yeah i was a moron back in the day shitty bucket of lard poop you are a shitter everything is except what am I even trying to say? 2013 FOCO was the best FOCO, let's be honest. And the reason why I fell in love with this game to begin with was because of the visual style and ideas presented here. Just like these three titles, it has shaped my mind of what an indie game is supposed to be. You also had all these wacky items like Shoop Da Whoop, Common Cold that gives you poison tears, Squeezy, an item in reference to those weird pop-out eye toys that literally makes you pop out Isaac's own eyes. Number one turns your tears into a urine. You are fighting by pissing on your enemies and Isaac is just smiling like a little baby. You also have all these creative and wacky bosses. Dozens of secrets to be found and the best part is that you actually have to strategize to win. This is a hard game but every time you beat it you unlock something new which makes you want to replay it continuously. And I mean if some nobody on the internet can make a thousand episode Isaac let's play I I think you succeeded as a game developer. The only big problem this game really faced was the fact that it was completely made in flash. Yes, that flash. And it's insane how much Edmund managed to get out of it. It's the single best flash game ever created. That's not even up for debate. But it's laggy, it's janky, and it's really unpolished. But that was just the nature of flash itself. It was never meant to be this big thing, but it became so goddamn popular that Edmund decided to kind of remake it from the ground up. I played and watched so much Vanilla Isaac as a kid that I was extremely stoked to hear this. And when The Binding of Isaac Rebirth got released, I instantaneously fell in love with it. Everything that I liked about Vanilla Isaac was here, but just better. The only real criticism I have for this version of Isaac is that it is a baby boo-boo game. Rebirth is a lot easier compared to Flash Isaac, and the same goes for Afterbirth and Afterbirth Plus. Plus. But Edmund was mad. He slammed his fist on his desk and screamed. Ah, I'm screaming. Ah. He didn't want his game to be for little babies, so he decided to kidnap a group of people that made a fan mod called Anti Birth. One final DLC to fix all the flaws of Isaac. And they did it. This DLC is it's it's so good. It's so goddamn good. The part I really didn't like about Afterbirth and Afterbirth Plus was the amount of item bloat in the game. Rebirth and even Vanilla Isaac had some truly awful items in them, but instead of making them usable, they just kept adding more garbage on top of it. Especially Afterbirth Plus. They added so many worthless pieces of crap in this expansion while not fixing the older ones. The game turned from slowly making your 
yourself more powerful with each pickup too. Let's just hold R until I get a good item because otherwise the game just isn't fun. Thankfully, Repentance bought a lot of bad items while nerfing the ones that made you instant win, making it way more balanced and fun to play. And for some reason, a lot of people really dislike all the item nerfs. And yes, I do not agree with all of them, but most of them genuinely make the whole experience a lot better. The reason why I stopped playing this game was because it became a snore fest. Doing this isn't fun, it's boring as hell. Enemy variety was also kinda lackluster in these two DLCs. A lot of enemies were just color swaps with extra abilities. So in conclusion, this DLC is eh, and uh, this one just straight up sucks. But repentance man, ooh, it it's spicy, okay? It's very spicy. I already said that a lot of items were changed to make the game more balanced and fun to repeatedly play, but there are also dozens of fun new items, entire new floors, bosses and enemies, an insane amount of sprite and texture updates, new mechanics, synergies, characters, so on and so on. It feels like an entirely new game, that's how much stuff has been added and all of it is really high quality. This is the best state the game has been in since oh. Rebirth and I feel like I'm a 12 year old kid experiencing everything all over again. And no matter how many hours you have in this game, each and every run you do is different from the last. You have runs where you try to keep your red health low so you can benefit from extra damage, runs where you turn into a Beyblade, shoot giant lasers, throw knives, runs where you poop out bombs. Uh -oh. There are times where you puke out explosives, shoot eyes that act like pool balls, or you can become death himself and shoot out size. There is a pill that increases your size and if you manage to duplicate that pill, you can fill the whole screen with just Isaac. Like, like, what the hell? And if you're lucky enough and get some godly stuff in a row, you can end up with some crazy item combinations and do stuff like this. Now of course not every run is going to be this godlike, most of them end up more basic with only a few things that make everything go all wacky. But there are so many strategies you can pull off, so much room to experiment and see what works best. Here is one of my favorite new item combinations, Brimstone and Ipecac. Brimstone makes you fire this big piss off laser and Ipecac makes you puke explosives so you end up with a giant exploding laser that just kills you, it's amazing. It is mind boggling how many items interact with each other. The amount of time this must have taken to code is mental. This is just one item guys, just a single one. Your main goal is to fill this entire post-it note on the character select screen. You need to clear the womb, cathedral, the chest, shawl, darkroom, hush, delirium, this one can suck my nuts, ultra greed, boss rush, mega satan, mother, and other thing I'm not gonna spoil. So you need to do all of this, for each character, so 17 plus times. This makes a lot of sense now, doesn't it? Every time you complete one of these little stamps, you unlock something new that you can find in the game. Might it be a new card, item, trinket, machine, beggar, or rune, giving you basically more shit to play with. This basically means that all of those item combinations and synergies I was talking about earlier, well, there's even more of them now to play with, and the game keeps throwing stuff at you over and over again while not overwhelming you. It's really impressive. How they did this. You also have a bunch of challenges to do which really spice up the difficulty. You can play co-op with a friend, play around with cheat codes. There is just so much stupid stuff to play with, so much dumb garbage to do that I must say something very opinionated. The Binding of Isaac Repentance is the best roguelike ever created. No, 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 shut up, okay? Listen to me, listen. If I'm talking about indie games, this is always the first title that pops up in my mind. Not Terraria, not Don't Starve, and not Spelunky. This one. Vanilla Isaac runs at like 9 frames per second, but its gameplay still stands up strong after all these years. I got so hooked getting gameplay for this video that I accidentally got all the achievements. Yeah, that should say a lot. But Repentance is such a fine-tuned version of Isaac. It's so polished and densely packed with things to do. Every single time you think you've seen everything, the game smacks you in the face and introduces something new to you. It's fun to see how wacky the bosses are. It's fun to see how dumb Isaac looks after picking up a dozen or so items. It's fun to puzzle the lore together. The game is just straight up fun. That's like the best compliment I can give to something. My extremely dumb and stupid friend Cyber was hesitant about playing this game saying stuff like, Oh no, I, I don't want to play it. I'm a little, little baby. No, no, no. 
And look at her now. Stupid dummy. The Binding of Isaac might look stupid as hell on the surface, but underneath all of that, you have a sad, depressing game about a little kid struggling with its own thoughts. Isaac thinks his mom wants to kill him. He thinks he's a demon that deserves to be punished. Every single character you can play as is actually a different version of Isaac himself. He doesn't know who he is supposed to be and struggles with it. You should see this whole game as Isaac's imagination. It's not real, but amplified by real world events like his dad leaving him or his mom being extremely obsessive with God and religion. And the sad thing is that it doesn't even end on a positive note. It's depressing. But man, it makes for some great theming and world building. I'm not gonna lie. There is no other game like Isaac, okay? It's so original, so full of character that it has persisted in my mind for more than nine years as one of the goats of the indie genre. You have funny references and jokes sandwiched between dark and gruesome themes. Gameplay that changes with every run you do, but most importantly, you have a boss called Mega Fatty. This is the best game ever created. It's not perfect, okay? Let that be clear. Delirium sucks, the speed and ultra hard challenges are annoying as hell, and uh, why does this even exist? But all of that aside, repentance is how you do a DLC. Just jam pack it with things to do, make what was great even better. I still stand by my point, this is the best roguelike currently out there. It's a game that has inspired me to be creative and just make things and to see it end with a bang really does makes me smile, so thank you Edmund. This shit rocks.